Welcome back everyone, this is Dragon in White here, back with another episode of Assassin's Creed. I believe this time, this is uh, episode 5, it has been a couple of days since I last played. Uh, so I'm, I can't quite exactly recall where I was. Uh, I seem to recall something about trying to rendezvous with the Assassin's uh, headquarters or something like that. Um, well, in any case, before we begin, I would just like to begin with our usual plugs, uh, the shameless plugs, as we all know it. So firstly, uh, my merch store is up. If you would like to support me, to take a look and consider purchasing some of the stuff on them. All the links will be down in the description below. Uh, secondly, I do I am the translator of Immortal and Martial Duo Cultivation. This is a free to read novel available on gravitytales.com. Um, the link is also down in the description below. And finally, I do have a Patreon set up. While it is more for my uh, novel readers, uh, it allow it grant, basically grants um, early access chapters to my Patreon supporters. But if you wish to support me financially, that is also one possible means of doing so. And you do get advanced chapters. I don't really have much on for the YouTube watchers. Okay, without further ado, let us begin. Okay, so let's see. I find it quite interesting that whenever you come back into the game, Take you start back time. at I'm the animus. Oh boy, I just record. I'm gonna have to try to record the controls. Um, hey, this should be left hand, left hand, right hand. Okay, spacebar. Uh, where am I? Hmm. I don't want to do a rooftop chase. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Where am I? No, wait, seriously. Altair, it is good to see you, and in one piece. You as well, friend. I am sorry for your troubles. Think nothing of it. A few of your brothers were here earlier, in fact. Oof, if you'd heard the things they said, I'm certain you'd have slain them where they stood. It's quite all right. Yes, you've never been one for the creed, have you? Is that all? I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget myself. What business brings you to the mass? A man named Tamir. Al Muallam takes issue with the work he does. I meant to end it. I trust you have searched the area to better understand your enemy. Yes. Here's what I've learned. Tamir rules over the Souk El Salah. He makes his fortune selling arms and armor and is supported by many in this endeavor. Blacksmiths, traders, financiers. He's the single largest death dealer in the land. And have you devised a way to rid us of this blight? A meeting is being arranged at Souk El Salah to discuss an important sale. They say it's the largest deal Tamir has ever made. He'll be distracted with his work. That's when I'll strike. Your plan seems solid enough. I give you leave to go. Oh, what's that? Oh. Wait, what was the thing that I just got? will be done. You may rest here until you are ready. Um, I don't recall requiring dress. Fast forwarding memory to a oh, excellent. One. What is a soup? Hmm. Okay. Well, it looks like I'm missing a lot of, um, uh, Okay. 
Okay, uh, let's leave it at all. Um, destination target. Okay, so uh, I don't really recall going to start off the quest earlier, but uh, it appears that it's done it for me. So why not? Okay, um, from the looks of it, I feel that we do have to clear off all this as much as we can. So let's maybe work on some of this. Um, once I figure out how I get out. Ooh, can I come up here? Oh, interesting. Is that the way in? Okay, I got vigilantes there. Oh, that is the way in. What is that man doing? Okay, that's an assassination target. I'm glad to <laughs> Wait, so what do I do here? Okay, okay. Wait, are those an objective? Let me just take a quick look up the internet. Okay, yeah, I just checked the net and apparently vigilantes are just letting us know that they are there it is not a mission to complete okay that uh just make things a bit easier okay so um to spruce up maybe some of my videos to make it sound more interesting i was thinking of maybe talking about and introducing uh various topics uh as i actually um go through go through the gameplay as much as my mind can handle um, so okay clearly I can't do it while fighting okay. okay one more okay there we go okay so uh, during some mundane actions like, uh, okay, one more. Okay, I gotta focus at this bit, unfortunately. Uh, multitasking is not exactly the best of my ability. Okay. So, uh... Good you came along when you did. Another minute and they would have made off with me. I owe you my freak. Yes, I think I gotta clear off some of the bits there. Who would do such an awesome Okay, let's look at the map, move on to the next one. I think let's clear off this viewpoint. Okay, good. Uh you cannot okay. escape! <laughs> Okay, just kill them, come on. That actually just helped a lot. Okay, so yeah, as I was saying earlier, I was thinking of uh, talking about various topics to help spruce up the... Uh, uh, to make the individuals more interesting, basically. Um, oh, I can't go that way, okay. So... Today in Singapore, at where, I, where I'm from, um, the government here recently announced something new today uh, that is regarding PMDs, uh, Personal Mobility Devices. So what these are are basically, um, are basically 
uh, mobility devices uh, such as e-scooters, uh, electric bicycles, um, basically things that help people move around as a personal thing. That is, uh, of course, non. Uh, what's up more here? Non uh, essential. Why won't anyone maybe you should notice? But you already lost. God favors me. You will not win. Flee while you still can. Okay, I gotta be careful here. One more. Okay, so uh, basically the government has, uh, for the past few months, uh, there have been a lot of discussion on, on PMDs, uh, e-scooters and electric bicycles mostly. Um, basically what's been going on is that plenty of people are having um, accidents happen with uh, PMDs, especially with pedestrians. And due to safety, the government have decided to uh, ban PMD from the road. I mean, I do agree with this. Um, okay, sorry, that is fight. Just gotta deal with this first. Okay, I think this is rather hard to do. Okay, I'm gonna run. This is not good. Okay, run, run. Okay, where can I hide? Where can I hide? I need a hiding spot. Uh, come on, hiding spot. Okay, good. I see a hiding spot there. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, so yeah. Um, so PMDs have been something that uh, helps people out moving around short distances mostly uh, it's an item of convenience um, and government has banned them off the roads like a couple of months back uh, for safety reasons of course it makes sense um, but there's this other issue now whereby today this morning they made an announcement that they are banning PMDs from pedestrian paths so if they can't be on the road or can't be on a pedestrian path um, then the only place where they can be at are bicycle paths and park connectors in Singapore, which are honestly not very widespread around. Um, so what has been happening on the end of the pedestrian path is that, uh, seriously? Uh, is that plenty of they have actually set rules down for PMDs in Singapore in the usage so on pedestrian path it used to be limited to a speed of 10 kilometers per hour or in miles per hour it should be about seven five or seven uh, six or seven um, however and then, uh, and then for for park connectors they are allowed to go up to 25 kilometers per hour um, however, the problem is a lot of people apparently did not follow the rules on that and they have um, violated the speed limit basically recklessly riding on pedestrian paths at speeds way higher than they are allowed to. So I think as a result there were many uh, injuries uh, when they crashed into people as well as uh, many people having pretty bad attitudes about it. Uh, the riders themselves, I mean. Um, yeah. And... Where is this? Where am I supposed to be at? There you go. Yeah. So as a result, um, there were casualty, uh, some, some injuries and there was even a couple of deaths, I believe, that resulted from this. So in the response to all this, uh, the government just basically decided that all PMDs to be banned from pedestrian paths. Now, personally, I just want to voice my opinion about this while I'm here. Is that I personally feel that 
the method of regulation is not right. Personally, I do see this as a as a tool that can help the people to get around, cut down on traffic congestion, as well as being something more green because it runs on electricity rather than fossil fuels. Um, Yeah, no. Yes, so uh, I feel that the means of regulating this is not really right. It is a pretty good uh, thing when used correctly. Granted, there's always those people who tend to um, decide to take things in their hand, ignoring basically the law and causing problems for others. Um, however, this is actually just a small handful of people. I mean, let's think about it carefully. Regulations state that the PMDs or the electric scooters cannot go beyond uh, 20 kilo kilograms. Moving at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, that is effectively running speed of human. Okay, I'm gonna do this first. You'll never get away! Why would anyone want to do that? Out of the way! Why won't anyone come back? Come back here! I really wish I can do my counter. It's Wait, where's the person I'm supposed to save? No? Interesting. <laughs> There we go, okay. Now that we have clipped this. Ah, one more. Thank you. Thank you. I'll find a way to repay this kindness, I swear it. Alright. Alright, so back to what I was saying. Um it's actually a pretty kind of lost track where I was exactly. Um oh, dang it, one more. Okay, good. Um now where was I? Get this. So yes, it was, it's something that really helps the people and... Oh yes, I remember now, I was talking about how, how what kind of damage a PMD could do. So 20 kilograms maximum in weight, assuming that and maximum speed on pedestrian paths, which will bring it down to 10 kilometers per hour or running speed. Now, honestly, if people were really following the rules, Firstly, crashing into someone, that speed should not be fast, so fast to the point where one would not be able to avoid it and the riders should be alert enough to be able to avoid the crash themselves. Secondly, even if you were to crash into someone, I believe the weight and speed is not at the point where it will result in heavy injuries or even death, especially death. Okay, now there's another, here comes another rescue citizen. Let's uh, deal with this. Alaris 
Okay, that was interesting. Slap him and then go around and stab him. That is uh, the most interesting assassination I've seen so far. Okay, so uh, back on the safety of this riding. So it really shouldn't be something that causes heavy injuries. Um, so my conclusion about all these injuries is that they happen as a result of people not following the rules and choosing to uh, break them so that they have they have more convenience for themselves. So given this, people who break the rules are actually just a smaller portion. There's actually quite a lot of PMD riders um, based on statistics that are given. There are 100,000 PMD devices registered with the government and possibly more that are illegal. Of course, let's not mention the illegal ones. Uh, so I think we can safely conclude that the number of riders causing problems is actually just a small percentage given the number of uh, injuries and I think one or two deaths, I think. I'm not entirely sure on that. So in my opinion, I feel that their method of completely banning it off the pedestrian road and the roads, effectively making it a uh, as good as a, 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 a complete ban on the, on the devices, um, because in Singapore, bicycle paths are not something very common, or uh, so are park connectors. So this is effectively a complete ban on PMDs. Um, my thoughts on it is that PMD riders should be regulated, but not to the point of a complete ban like this. Instead, what should be done would be for PMDs to be seen like vehicles, like cars, where Huh? I am out there. Yes. PMDs should be seen as cars. And basically, if anyone who wants to own a PMD would be required to register the vehicle in their name and, aside from that, obtain a license to do so to have the vehicle. So, registration of vehicle is something that's already in place. Uh, aside from registration of vehicle, um, it is also registered to a particular person and each vehicle is given a license plate number. Uh, this should be prominently displayed on the vehicle so as so that people can uh, trace down who are the ones responsible if any accident happen. But um, that aside, I would say that the main problem here is actually not on the device itself. You can try to regulate the device all you want there will always be problems. What should be regulated, in my opinion, are the people. So, in this case, rather than not only just a license plate, they should actually make anyone who wants to write a PMD take a simple road safety or path safety like um, test and issue a license with points like how a car license would have. So, once caught, if these people are reported uh, to the government uh, and evidence could be showed for their misdemeanor on the road or on the path, points could be docked off and their license suspended. So personally, I feel that this is a much better way of regulation. And yeah, I think the way they're jumping about it is just wrong cause now what they have resulted in, uh, what this has resulted is 100,000 devices rendered useless overnight and uh, the announcement was today and to be taken effective tomorrow so there was only a one day's notice so what about those people who purchased their device yesterday they effectively get two days of usage out of the device without even knowing such a thing was going on so for one the phasing out should have taken more time For another, uh, there is also the issue of uh, jobs. Now in Singapore, uh, food delivery has been growing. Okay, I'm pretty sure so has the US and we have uh, three major players in the market here. 
first is Grab Food, which is also a car sharing um, company like Uber. Basically, they are they they did bought over Uber in Asia, in fact. Then there is also uh, Food Panda and Deliveroo. These are the three major players in food delivery, and um, about thirty percent of their riders uses the PMD as a means of their transport to bring food to people. Now, this effectively means that people who rely on PMDs to deliver the food are now jobless. Effective tomorrow. Because they are not that it's no longer legal for them to use the vehicles on the road. Okay, hmm. so um let me figure out where this that will cost you your life make room help me you wish to die so yeah how did you do that by swinging my sword Oh, there, the, the slap cue again. I like that. You came along when you did. Another minute, and they would have made off with me. I owe you my. Somehow, I feel that my objective are a bit. Oh, I, it's because of that. Okay. Okay, I need to hide. I need to hide. Not me. Look away. Ugh. Okay, problem solved. Oh, that's the thing. Is that? Yeah, that's the one. So yeah, uh, back on what I was saying, so regulations on PMD should be done on humans rather than on the devices themselves. Of course, granted, every device requires a limit. Of course, if we have something, a, a PMD that can go as fast as a car, that's just re literally asking for someone to be cute. So yeah, in conclusion, um, it is my belief that um, PMDs should be regulated as though they were cars. Um, People who write them made to take licenses, and this sudden decision of the government actually caused a lot of uh, financial loss to people, as well as uh, job losses. Uh, of course, the government is trying to mitigate some of the issue, uh, like they are offering people to they are offering to pretty much pay one hundred dollars to everyone who has a PMD to is dispose with them. Um, but there is this other issue is that not all PMDs were created equal and as a result the value of some PMDs are much higher so it's kind of hard to just say that you pay a hundred when, when, when these people are going to lose like maybe six to seven hundred dollars worth of value whereas there are, always, there are some people who only paid two or three hundred dollars for their PMDs and they still get a hundred so this uh, method of uh, compensation has to be con really considered also based on the value of the devices so my proposal on that end really is to evaluate the worth of these PMDs and consider doing having up a system for reselling these PMDs overseas where they are allowed to be used Another minute and they would have made off with me. I owe you my I like that in a Okay, I'm just gonna hide in this first. Yeah, I'm gonna get all the viewpoints before I get to my assassination target. I think it is best that I work on that. Get it done once and for all. Who did this? Not me, not me. Ah, uh, done it. 
Honestly, I don't really care for these uh, vigilantes. I much, I much prefer to just kill all the guards that come in my way. <laughs> I know it's not very assassin-y, but you know, I mean, then again, I am an assassin. You know, I kill people. But yeah. Hey, in case uh, that's all my thoughts on PMDs is that just uh, I feel that the method of regulation is not right and there are better ways that it could have been done. Um, what is it? Yep, if you want to get mad with me, chase me up. Okay, and so after this uh, viewpoint synchronization, I think that'll be it for this episode. Um, we're coming close to my targeted 30 minutes per episode mark and yes that's how long I plan to have each episode basically about 30 minutes each episode plus minus 10 minutes depending on the logical stop point which that should be a sufficient amount of buffer there we go Okay, and that's it for the day. So I'll see you guys again next time, and I'll probably con start on in another episode after this. Uh, however, uh, uh, yeah, just right after this, and perhaps maybe I'll I'll, I'll think up with another topic of discussion. All right, ta ta.